My toolbox is an absolute disaster right now and it really slows down the flow when I'm working on project cars. Now, I like to blame the fact that I have two different project cars I'm working on right now and that's why everything's such a disaster, but in reality, my toolbox has been this disorganized for years, so. I managed to convince myself that the reason that it's such a disaster is because I have too many tools and I don't wanna buy a second toolbox. So I've just been piling tools into a drawer and letting it get more disorganized, but it's gotten to the point where it's hard to even use the tools anymore. They're kind of just in giant piles inside the box. The excuse I always had for not organizing these was that if I organize it any differently that I won't have enough room for all my tools. Like for example, if you've seen those Kaizen foam dealios, you kind of make like a cutout for your tools and you put your tool in there and it means that you can't stack any of your tools. There's a bunch of space between them and they take up a huge amount of space in your toolbox. I've always told myself it's more efficient to just throw them all in a pile. That starts to go out the window as soon as this tools stop being usable because they're all in a big pile. Now I still don't want to use that Kaizen foam because I really don't want to have to buy an additional toolbox in order to organize all these tools. So I need an organizer that takes way less space than Kaizen foam does, but I also need to be able to pull my tools out of it quickly and easily and stay in the flow when I'm working on project cars. When you're working on project cars, you kind of tend to take a bunch of tools out and put them in a pile where you're using them, and this gets pretty disorganized pretty quickly. It's also pretty easy to tell yourself that you're still working on something and therefore you don't need to put your tools away yet. I have this rule of thumb to deal with these little piles where if I spend more than a couple minutes looking for a tool and looking through all these little piles, I can't find it. I tell myself that it's time to start cleaning up all my tools and I spend five or 10 minutes cleaning up tools and I usually find that tool in the cleaning up process. I figure it's better to spend my time tidying than wasting my time looking for these tools. But this having to tidy up in the middle process and everything is really efficient for working on project cars. It'd be a lot better if the tools were just always organized in the first place. The gold standard would be if it's easier to actually put the tool away where it goes in the toolbox rather than being easier to put it in a pile next to the car. My idea for solving this problem revolved around 3D printing. Now 3D printing has its own problems. Most of the crap that you make with 3D printing is plastic and it's not that great of plastic. Typically people with 3D print stuff are usually making toys and knickknacks and not really functional products, but I think that functional products are possible with 3D prints and I think toolbox organizers is a really good use case for a 3D printer. So I tried to start designing my own 3D printed toolbox organizers. I started out with just making this little grid that I was going to use to make a modular standard of toolbox organizers, but after beating my head against that for a while and trying to figure out a good way to do it, I realized that there's no way I'm the first person that tried to do this. So instead of going with this design I was working on, I decided to look up some YouTube videos. And when you know it, I actually found a perfectly modular system exactly like what I was trying to design anyways that was probably a lot better than the system I was trying to design. The system that I found is made by a YouTuber named Zach Friedman and the fundamental principle of it is that you have this base plate with a square grid on it and each of the grids are 42 millimeter by 42 millimeter and then you take these organizers and bins and you put them in that grid. The grid stops them from sliding around and it allows you to keep it modular where you can rearrange these bins however they fit best. This system's called Gridfinity and I think it was gonna meet my needs perfectly, so I set out to start printing. The problem with these little 3D printed organizers is that most people that use them are not mechanics and they're not trying to put hand tools away. Most of them are 3D printing enthusiasts or they like little electrical parts and things like that and typically they're not even in a toolbox. So a lot of these models are either super tall because they're meant to be set on a bench and that won't fit in a toolbox, or they're for small little electronics, screwdrivers and things like that, rather than for like wrenches and crescent wrenches and that sort of thing. So even though there's a ton of models for this available online, I was downloading them from things.com. There's also thingiverse.com and other things like that. Plenty of these models are available, but they didn't fit perfectly with what I wanted to do. So of course I made my own. The first thing I needed to do to make my own models was I needed my own templates. The Gridfinity system is really nice because it uses these 42 millimeter by 42 millimeter squares and then it uses a seven millimeter height. They call this height 1U and then if it's 14 millimeters of storage space, they call it 2U and 21 millimeters is 3U. The awesome part about this is that they're stackable. So 
you don't lose much Z storage space because you can actually layer your tools on top of your other tools. But since they're square, you also don't lose any space side to side on any of these. If they were round, you'd miss space there. So it really conserves a lot of space, which works great. The first thing I needed to do to design my own organizers was I needed to make some templates. Templates for this already exist, but I like to use SolidWorks. This is a 3D modeling software that because engineers were allowed to work from home during the pandemic, I was lucky enough to get it on my own computer. It's an expensive piece of software and I wouldn't recommend it, but that's what I have, so it's what I use. Most people who design these things are doing hobby versions of software, so it's mostly free and open source software, and the templates they had did not play very well with SolidWorks. So I designed all my own templates. This was probably overkill, but I knew I had a lot of organizers to design, and I figured I'd prefer to have my own templates that worked well with what I was trying to do. Once I had all my own templates, I needed to start designing some tool holders. I did print off some wrench holders and some bit holders that were available online, and those worked out all right, but I did need to make a lot of my own models. The first models that I started with was for my Allen keys. The problem with Allen key holders is that they're really difficult to use. In order to get one Allen key out, you have to rotate and basically remove all of your Allen keys. They store nice and small and compact, which I like, but they aren't very usable. So this is a case where I actually thought I would give up some space in order to gain some usability. One thing to note when you're designing stuff like this is it's a lot easier to print out a drawing on paper than it is to 3D print something. So when I'm prototyping, I like to take a drawing that's scaled at one to one of the thing, set it on the table, and then check all the dimensions and make sure they fit. By doing this, I was able to figure out the exact radius I needed to fit all these Allen keys, and it worked out pretty well. I ran into an issue when I was printing these Allen key holders, though. In Gridfinity units, I wanted it to be five by two, so at 42 mil by 42 mil, that would put it at about 210 mil wide by whatever on the other dimension. But the problem with that is that the 3D printer I'm using is a clone of a Prusa i3. A Prusa i3 would be able to fit 210 mil. The cheap knockoff clone I have does not. You can see when I printed it that it kind of turned out like garbage. There's some easy solutions to fix the fact that this didn't fit. Like I could have cut the model in half and then after I printed it, glued it back together. Plenty of sensible options there, but instead I picked the not so sensible option. I decided that I might as well buy a new 3D printer. If you've seen much of my channel, you know that I can be a little cheap and I don't like to spend money. I'd rather build things myself than buy them. But I don't cheap out on tools. All of my hand tools are made in the US. My welder's a Lincoln, not some Chinese one. I like good tools and I consider a 3D printer a tool and I've been 3D printing for years. So I figured it was time to actually invest in a better 3D printer. The solution I went with was a little bit overkill, but I'm hoping it's one of those things that I grow into. This thing has a massive build volume. It's 300 mil by 250 mil by 300 mil, and it can print exotic materials like carbon fiber infused nylon and clear polycarbonates. And there's gonna be more exotic materials later on the channel when I play with that a little bit more. But the big thing for me right now is that I could print a lot of prints on this massive print bed. These little Allen holders turned out great. I didn't realize until just now that I had way more SAE keys than I had metric keys. This case holds less. So some of my metric ones, the slots are empty, but that's okay. I'm just glad I modeled the SAE first, not the metric, because then I would have had to redo the models. So the small Allen key one stacks on top of the big Allen key one. And then I have extra little pockets in these in case I have any spare keys or anything that I need stored. And then it's super easy to pick the whole thing up when I need to go work on it on my workbench or something. So these work great. It's super easy to get the keys out. You can either push on the bottom to pull them out or you can just reach in from the bottom and pull them out. The keys are all pretty firm in there. They don't really move. And I think it's a nice little display. Shows the on keys off well. Again, it does take a little more room than just leaving them in here, but it's gonna be way easier to use. So I'm really happy with how these Allen keys turned out. Now I just need to move on to crescent wrench and pliers and Allen sockets, all of that sort of garbage. If you're wanting to get into 3D printing, I wouldn't recommend starting with something this expensive. In the description, I'm actually gonna link some printers I would recommend that are a lot cheaper that will still fit this five wide Gridfinity unit. 
And all these models I'm making are gonna be available for free to download as well. So if you wanna get into this hobby, I might be biased, but now's a great time to do it. You don't have to start out with a thousand dollar printer. So if you're shopping for a printer, check out the description. And if you wanna use my models, check out buildautomedia.com slash gridfinity or things.com. I'll also upload them to things. I think more mechanics and project car builders should be aware of and get into 3D printing. I think it can be really useful in the garage. So all this stuff's available for free. And if you're hesitant to do it because of the learning curve of CAD, you do not have to start out with doing CAD. You can just download my models and print those. And there's plenty of other models online that you can print as well. If you do wanna get into the CAD side, there's a program called FreeCAD, which works, but I would recommend Fusion 360. That is a fully developed CAD software package that for hobbyists is free to use. If you're more of an artist than an engineer and you wanna make organic shapes rather than parametric shapes that you can model and modify, you could also try out Blender. Blender is great for organic shapes and things like graphic design and things, but the other CAD softwares I recommended are better for engineering. The Allen keys turned out great, but I had a lot more tools I needed to store. I'm not gonna bore you with all the details on all of those, but it did end up taking a few kilograms of filament to print all this crap, and honestly, it kinda took weeks. So I had my new 3D printer, I had my templates. Now I just needed to 3D print a bunch of these tool holders. There was a lot of print time that went into this. I probably used almost three kilograms of filament between testing different holders and throwing away the failed prints and just all that sort of normal prototyping. And it also took a few weeks to print. I even started printing some of my models on my old 3D printer and then other models on the new 3D printer and it still took a long time. I'm not gonna lie to you, 3D printing is slow, but the way it turned out, I think is awesome. My toolbox is now organized and I was able to fit all of my tools in it. There were a couple smaller tools that I reorganized and moved to another drawer, but these top two drawers are looking great. Basically everything that was in them and the big pile of parts before is still in there, but now, they're actually organized. I actually know where they are. They're super easy to grab. It works great. On my wrench and quarter inch drive drawer, I kind of made custom holders for every single piece that was in there. And I think that turned out great, but in the top drawer, I took a different approach. I basically just made different sized bins and put stuff in the size bin that they fit into. This was way easier because I didn't need custom models for everything. And it was good for my top drawer, which is more of a catch-all drawer anyways. The contents of the top drawer change a lot, so bins were a little better than custom molded stuff like in my second drawer. Overall though, this is super easy to use. If I need a tool, I can just pull it out of there, walk over to wherever I need it, and start using it and the tool stays in the organizer. It's not in a little pile on the cowl of the car, it's already in the organizer. And then I just come back and put it back. It also means that I can rearrange these drawers and add bins and everything super easily. You'll see some empty spaces in these drawers. There's actually a few places I could add bins and add a few more small parts, which is crazy to me because I thought I was gonna have to get rid of the number of tools I had in there. I didn't think I would end up with more space than I started with. This solution works amazing. I am so happy that my toolbox is organized now. I think it's gonna mean that when I'm working on these cars, I'll be a lot more efficient. I won't spend as much time looking for tools. I won't have to use the wrong tool because I'm too lazy to find the right tool. If you have the time and a 3D printer and or just the money for a 3D printer, I would highly recommend doing this. I think it turned out amazing. But what do you think? Do you like this solution? Do you have a better solution? Do you use a different set of organizers? Do you think 3D printing is a good way to do this or a bad way to do this? Are you Zach Friedman and you're mad I'm trying to steal all your thunder? Let me know in the comments. Either way, thanks for hanging out with me in my garage today and I hope to see you next time. Get out there and build something.